Okay, so when we deal with percent composition, we looked at the percent composition basically of one single compound. Okay, and we just looked at in a sodium chloride compound, what's the percent of sodium, just in that single kind of generic compound. Now we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to be able to look at the percent of sodium chloride in 50 grams of a sample, or we're going to be able to tell how many grams of that 50 gram sample are made up of sodium atoms or how many molecules of sodium are in that 50 grams of sodium atom, things like that. We're going to be able to look at that percent composition of a specific compound, okay, and of a specific sample. That's where we're looking a little bit different here. Um, but to do that, we need to review a couple concepts, okay, and one of those concepts is calculating the molar mass. Okay, do you remember how to calculate molar mass? We add up the molar mass from the periodic table, right? It's pretty simple. Okay, so let's just try a couple here. Um, molar mass, let's start of uh, this compound. Let's, let's put a little naming with it. Everyone's favorite, okay? So if I give you sulfuric acid. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Jumping right in after break here, okay? Sulfuric acid, I need you to give me the chemical formula first. And then I want you to calculate the molar mass of that compound. Okay, so let's work on the name and the compound first. Okay, for a review of those, uh, for those of you that are um, having a little trouble remembering, sulfuric acid means it comes from what type of anion? An eight, okay, which means it has to probably come from sulfate. And sulfate is SO4 minus two. Okay, so how many hydrogens do I need to pair with that to make a neutral compound? Two. two. So my compound for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Okay, so now we go ahead and solve for the um, molar mass. Okay, so how many hydrogen atoms do I have? Two, and the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01, okay, or realistically just one. Right, I'd be fine if rounding that to a whole number. Sulfur has one sulfur atom, and the sulfur's molar mass is about 32, right, and I only have one of those. Oxygen's molar mass is 16, and I have four of those. So I'm going to add all those up. And this is one you could round to a whole number, right? That 0 0.02 is not going to throw us off a whole lot here. And I get a molar mass value of 98 grams per mole, right? The, the units for molar mass are grams per mole. What are the units for atomic mass? AMU. AMU. Perfect. Okay, does this coming back to everybody a little bit here? Okay, perfect. Let's do a couple more. I want you to give me the molar mass of calcium nitrate. And magnesium chloride. Okay, you're going to give me both of those formulas as well as their molar mass. A couple of you forgot to um, balance that ionic compound. Calcium has a charge of plus 2. Nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So how many of those nitrate molecules do we need to balance the calcium? We need two of them. So that gives me CaNO3, 2. Okay, which means when we add up our molar mass, we would take 40 for calcium plus... Two nitrogens, which is 28, plus how many oxygens? Six, not five, right? We distribute that. We multiply that through. So 16 times 6 is 96. We're going to add all those up, which gives me 164. And you could have a decimal in there depending on if you kept those decimals. That's fine. Okay, those three are all elements that I'm pretty good with rounding to a whole number because they're really close. Okay, questions there? Magnesium has what charge? Plus two. Plus two.
plus 2 and chloride has minus 1. Mm -hmm. So how many chlorides do we need? Two. And, G, and do we need our parentheses there? No, no because it's not a polyatomic ion. Okay, the 2 goes right to chlorine, which is what we want. So magnesium is, I think, 24.3. I want to keep that decimal point, okay, because a 3 is not close enough. The only ones we round to a whole number is if it's, you know, 0 0.99, 0 0.98, or 0 0.01, you know, things like that. Okay, chlorine or chloride is 35.5 times 2, okay, which is really 71. So 71 plus 24.3 gives us about 95, oops, not 25, 95.3 grams per mole. Okay, we agree with those, hopefully. Okay, barium hydroxide, you're going to give me the formula, and then you're going to give me the molar mass. So barium plus how many oxygens? Two. two. And plus how many hydrogens? Two. two. Good. Okay, and why did we need two hydroxide molecules? Barium had a plus two charge. Perfect. Barium had a plus two charge. Hydroxide is minus one. So we need two of those hydroxide molecules to balance that. Uh, and what did we have for our final molar mass here, Cade? 173. 171.3. 171.3. And what's our units? Grams per mole. Per mole. Good. Not just grams, because if it's just grams, then that means it's just a mass. Now we need to look at a little bit of review with our conversions and how we convert from grams to mole and moles to grams and grams to molecules and molecules to moles, all those conversions, okay? What's our format that we use with those? T-charts. Everyone's favorite. Yay. Okay? Uh, T-charts are going to be a big tool for us when we do our conversions, so we need to review those a little bit, okay? So let's say that I started with... 45 grams of, I'll give you the formulas because I'm feeling nice. Um, let's see here. We'll do potassium iodide. Okay, and I want to find out how many moles are in that compound. So I want to find out how many moles are in 45 grams of potassium iodide. First of all, is my formula balanced? Potassium iodide? Check to make sure it's balanced. Potassium is a? plus one, and iodide is a minus one. So we're good to go, right? All right. So let's review our T-charts. What's the first thing we always do with a T-chart is write what, yeah, write what you know, or write what's been given. Okay, so we're going to start with 45 grams of potassium iodide. Then we draw our T. Okay. We want to go from grams to moles. Is there a direct link between those two? Yes. Yeah, there is. There is. Okay. And what's that, what's that conversion factor between grams and moles? The molar mass. Yeah. If we wanted to go between grams and molecules, is there a one-step problem between those? No. no. Right? Moles is always our middleman. Okay. So grams to moles. We can go grams to moles here. Which of these needs to go on the bottom? Grams. Right? We want to cancel out grams and go to moles. Okay. And moles always gets the one. So now you tell me how many grams of potassium iodide are in one mole of potassium iodide? 166. Okay, and how did we find that? Yeah, we're just adding those together, right? We're finding our molar mass. So molar mass always goes with grams. Potassium is 39.9, or 39, sorry, 39.1. And iodide is 126.9. That gives us 166 grams per mole. We agree there? Okay, so do, what do we do next? How do we do the math with it? Perfect. Multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. We're multiplying by 1, so really not a multiplication that we need to do there. But that's how we do it. So 45 divided by 166, and we get 0.27 moles of potassium iodide. Okay, we started with 45 grams, which is greater than or less than one mole of that substance. Less than. Less than. So does it make sense that we come out with a decimal point as our mole quantity? Yep. Good. Okay, you need to be checking yourself there. All right, good with these conversions? All right, let's try a three-step one now. So let's say I started with 4.8 6 times 10 to the 24th molecules. 
of, we'll just do salt, and we want to find out how many grams. So how many grams are in 4.86 times 10 to the 24th molecules of salt or sodium chloride? So this is not just a one-step T-chart, right? This is going to have to be two steps because we can't go directly from grams to molecules. We have to go to moles. We have to stop at our, our middleman, okay? So we write what we know, 4.86 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Okay, then we draw our T-chart. Our final goal is to get to grams. But in order to do that, we need to go from molecules to what? Moles. So we go molecules on the bottom and moles on the top. Okay, what does the mole get? The one. And how many molecules are in one mole of any substance? Good. Avogadro's number. In any compound, right, we always put that number with molecules. We don't put that number with grams. We don't put it with moles. We say there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms or whatever in one mole of any substance. So now we've canceled molecules. We need to go from moles to grams. So moles needs to go where? Bottom. Good. Grams goes on the top. Mole gets the one. What's the molar mass of sodium chloride? Good, 58.4 or 58.5, depending on how you round, that's fine. Molar mass always goes with the grams. So now we multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. What type of number should we be expecting? Really big, really small, average? Semi-big, right, average. When we think of a big number, we think about number of molecules, so times 10 to the 20th, times 10 to the 21st. Uh, grams, we should get a pretty average number. So we multiply across the top. Divide by the bottom. What's important when you divide by Avogadro's number? What's important to do in your calculator? Use parentheses or more, or even better would be to use the E button. Okay, and our units for this are just grams. We've canceled moles. It's not a molar mass, so it's not grams per mole. We've canceled our molecules, canceled moles. We're left with grams, which is what our unit should be in. Is that about what we got, hopefully? Okay. Percent composition before. Except now we're looking at percent composition of a given sample. So before we kind of assumed we were just looking at one mole of a substance, right, or even one molecule. We were looking at a pretty simple scale of that, okay? So we said if, if we've got one mole of sodium chloride, it's, you know, 30-something percent sodium and 60-something percent chlorine, okay, by mass. That's what we were looking at before. Now we're going to be looking at a specific sample of that, whether it's moles, whether it's grams. We're going to be able to look at the percent of that compound um, based on some ratios that are given in our, in our chemical formulas, Okay. So let's go ahead and we're just going to start with an example and we're going to work through what we're doing here, okay? So we're going to look at an example that says, what is the mass of carbon in 33 grams of this molecule, C13H18O2, okay? What's the mass? This compound right here happens to be ibuprofen, in case anyone was wondering. What's the mass of carbon in 33 grams of that sample? Okay, so we need to talk about uh, a couple things here. Before we start plugging anything in, before you get too ahead of yourself, I want to start talking about a couple things that these subscripts mean. Okay. So on, if we just think about a single molecule of this ibuprofen atom, how many carbon atoms are in this molecule? 13. 13. How many hydrogen atoms? And how many oxygen atoms? Two. Two. 
Okay, it works the same way with moles because moles is just a bigger version, right? If we have one mole of, these, of this compound, okay, so if we have one mole of these molecules, how many moles of individual carbon atoms do we have? 13. 13. And how many moles of individual hydrogen atoms do we have? 18. 18. And we have two moles of individual oxygen atoms. Does that make sense? We have one mole of the compound, which means we have to have 13 moles of carbon, 18 moles of hydrogen, and two moles of oxygen. Okay, so those subscripts just become a ratio, and that's going to be important here when we're doing these um, conversions. Okay, so that those subscripts can become a ratio. So let's start looking at um, how we need to convert here. So the whole compound to mass of just a single carbon atom. Oh, sorry, single carbon within that um, compound. We're not looking at a carbon atom individually. Okay, but we're looking at the element carbon here. Okay, so we want to go from grams of this compound to grams of just carbon. That's our goal here in our T-chart. Does that make sense? Okay, so let me go a different color here. If I want to start with my T-chart, I always write what I know. So 33 grams of C13H18O2. Okay. From grams of my compound to moles of my compound. So I go grams of C13H18O2 to moles. Okay, moles gets the 1 here. Whenever we're going between grams and moles, moles gets the 1. Now we need to find our molar mass of that huge compound. Good, that's what I had too. I had 206. Okay, so we've canceled grams of the compound. We're left in moles of our compound. Is that where we want to end? No. So here's where it gets a little bit trickier, and we, do, we have to do what's called the mole ratio step. We're going to look at the ratio between these two compounds. We just said that in one mole of our compound, how many moles of carbon is there? 13. 13. And so at this mole ratio step is the only place that we can switch between one substance to another, is in this mole ratio step. Okay? We can't switch from grams of the substance to grams of the atom. We can go from moles to moles. That's it. Okay? Moles is our middleman, so that's where we always do our trading. Okay? So now if we want to get rid of moles of our compound, we'd say moles of C13H18O2. And we want to go to moles of just carbon. Okay? What did we say the ratio here was? One mole of the compound gives me how many moles of individual carbon atoms? 13. Okay, so this is called that mole ratio step. And in this step only, when it's moles to moles, can we convert between one particular compound and another compound. Does that make sense? Only in that mole to mole step. So in this thing, in this step right here, moles doesn't necessarily get the one, right? The compound does, but not both moles, because then it'd just be one to one, you know. Sometimes that happens, but sometimes it doesn't. All right, so now we're done with moles of our compound, and we're left in moles of carbon. Is that where we want to be? Yes. Wait, no. No, we want to be in grams of carbon. So if we want to go from moles of carbon to grams of carbon, mole here gets the one again because we're between moles and grams, and we know one mole of individual carbon atoms weighs how many grams? Okay, so before you do math, I want you to ask questions about how this T-chart came about or what, where numbers came from, if you have any of those questions. Okay, we went from grams of our sample to moles of our sample. From moles of our sample to moles of individual carbon atoms. Now we're going to go from moles of individual carbon atoms to grams of individual carbon atoms. Uh -huh. This is just the molar mass of carbon. So one mole of carbon atoms equals 12 grams. That's just from the periodic table. Okay. The 206 is the molar mass of ibuprofen, that compound. So now we multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom. Go ahead and do that math.
Go ahead and round this to a whole number. Not that it really makes a huge difference, but... All right, Kiana, what did you uh, end up having for grams of carbon here? 25 grams. 25 grams. Okay. All right, so there's a couple different ways that you can do this. We just showed you one way that we could do this. Okay, we did this T-chart. We found out that there's 25 grams of carbon in that substance. If we take 25 grams divided by 33 grams, which is the total, we said that this is about 75.6% carbon. Okay, that's what we did. We took the grams of carbon divided by the total mass. tells us we're about 75.6 grams. Of, I'm sorry, 75.6% carbon. If we just found the percent composition of it, assuming there's one mold, would we get the same percentage, do we think? Let's try it. Try that. Find the molar mass. We know is 206. Molar mass of that compound is 206. The mass of carbon within that compound is... Mass of carbon within that compound, there's 13 carbon atoms times 12. Right, is 156. So if we take 156 divided by 206, we get 75.7%. Okay, so there's two ways that we can go about solving for that percent of carbon. Okay, that's if we're asking for the percent specifically. If we're asking for grams, then we have to go this way and we have to do our teacher. Okay. All right, so how, what is the mass? of copper in 6.25 moles of copper nitrate. So first thing that you need to do is check to make sure this compound is balanced and that it's done correctly. Okay, copper 2 nitrate, which means as copper has a plus 2 charge, nitrate has a minus 1 charge. Is that balance okay? Okay, so we want to find mass of copper. But we still need to start with what we know. This time we're starting with moles, so we're just taking out one of those first steps uh, of our equation here. Okay, and if we want to go from moles of our compound, what do we need to go to? Moles of, moles of copper. We don't need to go back to grams of our compound. That does us no good. So we want to go from moles of our compound to moles of copper. So I'd say moles of CuNO32. So now you're going to tell me how many moles of copper are in that compound? One. That's it, right? It's a one-to-one. -one. There's only one copper atom in that molecule, which means if you have one mole of our compound, we've only got one mole of copper atoms. Okay, so we've canceled moles of our compound. Now I want to go from moles of copper to grams of copper. I use the molar mass. Okay. Okay, copper's atomic mass or molar mass is 63.5. Multiply across the whole top, divide by the whole bottom.
All right. Okay, so this is taking it a step further than what we've done in class so far. So first, you're not solving for the mass. You're solving for number of atoms, which means you need to probably use Avogadro's number. Good. And milligrams to grams, we have to do that conversion. So how many milligrams are in one gram? Ten. A thousand. Okay, so there's ten decagrams in a gram, hundred centigrams in a gram. Uh huh. I'm sorry, that's C9. My bad. <coughs> C9. H804. So there's a thousand milligrams in one gram. Okay, so we should start with a thousand milligrams, I'm sorry, a hundred milligrams divided by a thousand gives us 0.1 grams to start with. You could put that in your T chart if you want, that's fine. You don't have to. So C9H8O2. We're going to go from grams of our compound to moles. So we'd say 180 grams of C9H8O2. One mole. O4. O4, I'm sorry, you're right. O4. Okay. It's really important that you keep that label as you are going through your T-chart because a lot of you I would ask, what is this one mole of? And you didn't seem to know, okay? So you need to make sure you keep that label and keep that compound. So we've canceled grams. We're left with moles of our compound. That's not what we want. We want to get rid of moles of our compound and go to moles of just hydrogen. So what's the mole ratio here between our compound and hydrogen? One mole of our compound is eight moles of hydrogen. Okay, so now we're done with moles of our compound. And we're left with moles of hydrogen. We want to go to atoms of hydrogen. Okay, one mole of our hydrogen atoms gives us 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and several of you put eight right here with this moles of hydrogen. That would be telling us that eight moles of hydrogen is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and that's not right, right? This is one mole of anything. So once we get back to these steps, then the mole gets the one again, okay? And once we do all the math and multiply across, divide by the bottom, I got about 2.67 times 10 to the 21st hydrogen atoms. Yeah?